Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me today and tuning in. I'm Kina Dill with Lisa's Care Connection, and today I'm going to share some healthy sleep tips with you. For those of you who don't know me, I'm not a doctor of any kind. For those of you who do know me, well, you can probably stop laughing at the thought of me being a doctor. It's okay. No hard feelings. When you hear brain health, what comes to mind? Exercise, diet, how about sleep? Chances are that's not the first thing that came to your mind, but research does show that it could be one of the things we should focus on for brain health. And that's kind of scary when we consider that one in three adults don't get enough sleep. 45% of Americans say poor sleep affects their daily activities each week. So the research does show this link between poor quality sleep and greater cognitive impairment. Now, it's important to realize that a link doesn't mean it causes it. So just because you're, you don't get a um, good amount of sleep doesn't mean you will get dementia or Alzheimer's. That just means that research shows there's a connection. It's related. Um, so studies do show that inadequate sleep, that means inadequate sleep is um, poor quality. So it's, it's quality, not just quantity. And that's what's linked to the harmful plaques and proteins that build up in our brain and that are uh, known to be associated in brains of those with Alzheimer's. Um, sleep apnea is a huge problem for adults and especially older adults. 60% of older adults have sleep apnea which is kind of scary, but the good thing is that sleep apnea is treatable. So it's important for us to be on top of our sleep and get evaluated for things like that. So we're not going to focus today on what happens while we're sleeping. We're not going to talk about those stages of sleep, but for our purposes, what's important for us to understand is what's happening when we get into that deep restorative sleep. And what researchers have found is that the space surrounding our brain cells actually may increase during our sleep. So that allows the brain to actually flush out those toxins. So imagine that that's a piping system going on, those nooks and crannies in your brain. And when you're asleep, you're actually going through a power wash, getting rid of washing out those toxins that have been associated with Alzheimer's. There are some things that may interfere with sleep um, that you want to rule out early on, like illness. When we're sick, um, when we are stressed out nowadays, well, life is stressful all the time. But particularly nowadays, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Chances are we're a little more stressed than usual. That can certainly impact our sleep. Medications are huge. Um, it's important to talk to your pharmacist or your doctor about any medications that you may be on. It could be a simple change as far as changing the time of day you take the medication. So do think about those if you are on any type of medications or have had a recent change. Normal physiological changes occur as we get older in our brains. That means as we get older, we tend to wake up earlier and we can't fall back asleep very well. So again, it's important to rule out any of these with your doctor um, so that you know there's not something else going on if you're not sleeping well. So do you have a hard time falling asleep? Do you wake up often in the night or do you feel exhausted during the day and have a tendency to doze off? Well, you would be um, very well accompanied by Americans. And in fact, one in three adults don't get enough sleep at night and they recommend seven to nine hours of sleep each night. And again, quality over quantity. So um, when we think about preparing for a good night's sleep, well, that really begins when we wake up and thinking about our schedule for the day, which means waking up and going to bed at the same time, even on weekends. I know that's really hard. Many of us like to sleep in on the weekends, but that can really mess up our sleep-wake cycle. Our bodies really get into that um, routine automatically. So if you mess up that system, you can really throw it out of whack. So keeping that schedule can really um, keep you feeling more refreshed during the day and sleeping at night. Are you someone that likes to nap? 
Have you been napping more during the pandemic, perhaps? Napping can be a good way to make up for lost sleep, but it can also make things worse. How long are your naps when you nap? Probably not 15 to 20 minutes. Well, that's what it should be. Naps should be limited to only 15 or 20 minutes, so less than 30 minutes. I know that when I take an hour or two hour nap, I feel really groggy and the rest of my afternoon is pretty shot. I don't feel good, but I feel much more refreshed if I take a 30 minute nap. And if you can't wake yourself up in 30 minutes, set your alarm on your phone or your watch, um, but try to limit your naps and try to keep those naps early in the afternoon, which means no napping after dinner. That can be tough if you are um, a couch dozer, like I am. I'm guilty. Um, a lot of times I do fall asleep. I enjoy falling asleep on the sofa after dinner and before bed. But that can actually um, be bad because when I wake up to go to bed, I have a really hard time falling back to sleep. So chances are if you do the same, you're feeling me. Um, diet. Diet affects so many things, including our sleep. If we're eating too close to bedtime, we could have heartburn. Um, caffeine could affect our ability to sleep. Even if you're having caffeine early in the day, um, that can affect your sleeping at night. So um, experts recommend limiting your caffeine after 3 p.m. For someone like me, caffeine doesn't bother me so much. I can have a big cup of coffee and take a nap. But I know other people that can't handle caffeine like that and um, are really awake for a long time. So try to think about that and how it affects you. Everyone is different. And in case you need another reason to um, limit your sugary foods and carb intake, keep in mind that it could be affecting your sleep. Lots of sugar and carbs, such as white bread, white rice, and pasta during the day can trigger that wakefulness at night. It can cause you to wake up. Um, and even if it's early in the day that you're eating that, it can really affect you sleeping at night. Um, a lot of people may drink alcohol to help them fall asleep. Alcohol is a depressant and it may help you fall asleep, but research shows that it disturbs your sleep cycle and it causes you to wake up often during your sleep and it can be harder to go back to sleep. So try to limit that alcohol for the remedy of sleep. Sleeping pills are also a common thing people use for sleep. Um, um, again, I'm not a doctor, so you always want to talk to your doctor about sleeping pills. Um, that could certainly be a fall hazard for one if, if you're taking sleeping pills, but they're not really intended to be taken forever. Um, so if you take them more than two weeks, it could have a rebound effect in which it's causing you to stay awake and have a hard time falling asleep. And if you can't figure out what's going on with you and what things you need to limit, try a sleep diary. Write down times and schedules and foods, what time you ate, what you ate, um, nothing too strenuous. But this, um, these notes can help you have um, a good discussion with your doctor to help you try to figure out what's going on. Maybe um, you would be a good candidate for a sleep study. If you have daytime sleepiness and you snore a lot, you know, like I said, 60 percent of people have sleep apnea and it's treatable. So definitely um, look into that and talk to your doctor about that if, if you're still having trouble. So some of the things um, I would like to share with you are ways that we can prepare our home and bodies for falling asleep. Your ritual, your bedtime ritual. So are you one of the people that um, have solved some of the world's biggest problems as you're trying to fall asleep at night? Maybe, um, you know, you've you've got some family issues and your brains just won't shut down. You keep going. You have this great idea. We could have solved, you know, world peace by now. But what happens? You wake up in the morning and you've forgotten. So why not try keeping a notebook beside your bed? Write down all those things that are nagging at your brain so that you can deal with them tomorrow. You don't have to worry about trying to remember them. Write them down and leave it alone. You also want to find some activities that resonate with you and help you calm and soothe and prepare for bed. So maybe that's a warm bath. Maybe that's deep breathing. Maybe it's reading. Whatever relaxes you, try to 
figure out what that is and find a way to incorporate that near your bedtime to help you fall asleep. Setting the stage and environment can be so important. You know, a peaceful bedtime routine really sends a signal to your brain that it's time to shut it down. All right. Think of uh, walking into a spa. When you walk into a spa and you you probably see some pretty orchids around, you hear that soothing music start playing. How do you feel? Does it instantly start to relax you? And uh, you're just really looking forward to that massage, right? Well, that's kind of what you want your house to look like. Not your house necessarily, but your bedroom, wherever you sleep. Try to think spa-like. You want to create a cozy space for one. You want to keep your room dark, cool, and quiet. Keep that noise down. Some people like a little bit of noise to help them fall asleep. So um, for me, for instance, I like to have a fan in the room. I don't want it blowing on me, but I like the sound of it. It's consistent and it helps me fall asleep. Sound machines are really great for that. Listen to white noise, the waves crashing, or if you're someone that really needs total silence, Maybe earplugs would be a good option for you. Um, keeping your room cool can really help set that stage. Also, I like to sleep at 65 degrees. That's the sweet spot for me because at 65 degrees, I can cozy up under my blankets, which I really love to do. Um, and that's the sweet spot for most people, 65 degrees. That's what research shows. But too hot or too cool can certainly interfere with your sleep as well. So try to find your sweet spot. Think about your bed. How comfortable is it? Your bed covers should really leave you enough room to stretch out and to roll over comfortably. If you wake up in the morning with a sore back or an aching neck, maybe you don't have the right mattress for you. Um, I know my husband and I, we like different firmness and mattresses. Um, so it's different for everyone. Are you a back sleeper, side sleeper? You might try to play around with some mattress toppers or some different pillows, maybe a new mattress, but, um, but think about, you know, how you sleep and trying new ways of making your bed comfortable. You want to keep your bed for sleeping. Don't work in your bed. Don't pull out that computer and spread out all your stuff on your bed. Um, I know I did that when I was younger, but um, it's really important that your brain start to associate the bedroom with sleep. So do your work somewhere else. Keep it out the bedroom so that when you're in the bedroom, your brain sends these signals. OK, it's bedtime. It's time to relax. You might try some lavender scented things. Lavender has been known to help us relax and fall asleep easier. They have sprays that you could put on your pillows or certainly a lot of lavender scented things. An eye mask, again, can help you block out that light. Uh, chamomile tea could be something to help you prepare and calm you down. Gentle stretching helps me prepare for bed, but you want to be careful. You don't want to exercise too close to bedtime, meaning a few hours before bedtime. You don't want anything too stimulating. So some gentle stretching, rolling your shoulders, stretching out that neck before bed, stretching your legs and arms can really prepare you to lay down and relax and relieve the tension in your muscles. So do you find yourself, maybe you wake up in the middle of sleep um, and you find yourself thinking, oh, I got to get back to sleep. How do I get back to sleep? Well, when you're thinking about getting back to sleep, it's really hard to fall asleep, right? Um, so research suggests that trying not to think about falling asleep can be helpful, um, meaning Focus on relaxation, like breathing and relaxing your muscles. Um, reading could be very helpful, but sometimes if you're really into a good book, it may stimulate you. So maybe you would like an article, like a scientific article could put you right to sleep, right? Um, you also, again, you want to postpone that worrying and brainstorming, make a note of something so you can move on. If that's what's waking you up, if, if it's because your brain won't stop working, um, try to use that notebook. Breathing can be really helpful for when you're trying to fall back asleep. A lot of people will have a lot of luck with what they call body scans, which means you're focusing your attention on different parts of your body and you're working your way up. 
and you're trying to identify where you're holding any stress or tension and then try to release it. So start with your toes. Think about your toes, gently move them. Think about, are they curled up? Is there any tension in them? And take a few seconds to focus on your toes and to release the tension before moving up to your ankles. Maybe roll your ankle and think about any stress that you're holding. So we have a lot of body parts, okay? If you take a few seconds to focus on your different body parts and trying to relax that tension, the chances are by the time you get up to your shoulders and neck, you may be pretty tired by that time. Guided meditations can be very helpful. Um, we have a lot of apps and although you shouldn't be looking at your phone, you may be able to play a guided meditation to help you fall back asleep, to even do that body scan. They have meditations to help you do that as well. If you if you have trouble focusing, then maybe start with something like that. Um, music is something that can you know, helps in so many ways, but certainly um, falling asleep. For me, I'm a really light sleeper. When I travel, all the sounds around me disturb me, wake me up. So um, when I travel, I have to have music. And when you use music, you want it to be calming. You don't want it to energize you. You don't want to get up dancing, right? Um, and you want it to be consistent. You want to be the same music each time. So you're training your brain to hear that music and to have that music trigger sleep. So for me, it's Billie Holiday. If I can't sleep or someone's snoring or I hear outside noises, I will put my headset on and listen to Billie Holiday. And my brain knows it's time to sleep. I've listened to it enough that um, for relaxing baths and sleep that that's for me, that's what works. So find the music for you that works. Maybe it's instrumental. Maybe it's classical. Um, just something soothing. Think spa like music, right? The last thing we want to focus on are, is lighting. Your darkness really stimulates our body to release melatonin, and that's our natural sleep hormone. And sunlight suppresses that. And there's a lot of fake light, um, like on our phones and TVs, that can mimic sunlight in that way and prevent us from sleeping. So we want to control that exposure to light, and that really starts in the daytime. You know, when you wake up, think about opening up your windows and making it bright. I really love bright rooms. Um, dark rooms make me feel a little sad and depressed. So nothing makes me feel better than opening up all as much light as I can. The, the blinds, they're open uh, first thing. So when you're having your coffee, when you're having your breakfast, try to sit by a sunny window or better yet, have it outside if you're able to. Um, go for walks outside. Take breaks outside during the day. Try to get daylight if you can during the day. Um, sitting, working by a window can also help that. Using a light therapy box can help. Um, this stimulates sunshine. I'm sorry, simulate sunshine. Um, I've never used this, but I know a lot of people use it with the shorter winter days. That can be really helpful when it's rainy or cloudy or when we don't have much sunshine. And at night, um, we want to avoid those bright screens. We all know that our phones and our computers and TVs, they can be disruptive. The sounds on TVs can really disrupt me. Um, but bright lights flashing on TV certainly affects me when I'm trying to fall asleep. So that means for me, I have to say no to late night television. Um, so maybe that would work for you as well. An audio book could be um, a good way to transition out of watching TV late at night. Um, if you have night lights, maybe outside of your window, um, it could be hard to get that dark room. So you might consider getting heavy curtains, um, some dark shades that you can pull down and block that light, or you could try a sleep mask. Um, but you, you definitely want to keep in mind that keeping it dark at night is a risk, um, a safety hazard for falling. So keeping night lights around, if you get up and use the restroom in the middle of the night or check on your loved one, make sure you do keep some night lights around so that you're not falling or, or getting hurt or small flashlight by your bed. Um, so I hope that some of these tools have been helpful in getting your brain thinking of different ways that you may be able to 
create a better, cozier space to sleep better at night uh, from sound machines to melatonin. Melatonin is, um, you know, we talked about that natural sleep hormone, melatonin. A lot of people are taking melatonin these days as a supplement um, instead of sleeping pills. You want to talk to your doctor about that most likely. Those are not regulated by the FDA. So just keep that in mind. You want um, a good brand if you do try it. Something that we didn't discuss was weighted blankets. Um, a lot of people love weighted blankets and they are exactly what they sound like. They come blankets that come in different weights. And um, like for me, that would probably be good because I like some kind of covers on me, but you know, I probably wouldn't like it real heavy. Keep in mind, um, some people consider that to be, in facilities in particular, consider it to be a restraint. So if you're trying to help your loved one have a better night's sleep, weighted blankets um, could be too heavy for them. So just do your research and make sure you're not restraining them in any way. So um, overall, if you're doing things in the day and you're staying awake and engaged, you're going to sleep better at night. When you're tired, you're going to sleep better. But there are um, lots of these tools and tricks to, to help you better get a routine together that will suit you. So um, again, I hope some of these tips have helped you. And if you have ongoing sleep issues, of course, you always want to rule out any major sleep disorders or any illnesses and discuss anything like that with your doctor. Um, and I appreciate you joining me today. I hope you did find some value in some of these tips and can incorporate these in some of your daily lives. So we'll catch you next time from Lisa's Care Connection. Have a great day.